Good morning and thank you for joining me on today's webinar. Today we're doing a fun session, a deep weeds plunge into medians inside of Civil 3D. That ought to be cool, hey? So uh, without any further ado, my name is Tench Selman. I am the president of More Competency Inc. Created the jump. Here's how you get in touch with us. one 800 584 1506 Give us a call anytime. Love to hear from you. Love to talk to customers and potential customers. What the hey? And we've got an instant on basic that makes Civil 3D work. Concept behind it is you get lots of styles, you know, the 80, 90 percent that actually you need to get work. It's based on the NCS, uh, includes all kinds of stuff that isn't even in the NCS that makes it work. Basic LAN desktop support, all the kind of thing you basically need to make Civil 3D plot and work out of the box. Hey, at a really inexpensive price per seat. We're our 11 product staggering idea actually runs in release 12 and did so on release oh my goodness so our 12 product which is in the final 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 little QA steps and about to come out right uh, we think will blow you all away the jump kit adds a whole bunch of more stuff to uh, what we give in Instant on Basic. Instant on Basic can't solve everybody's problems. So, you know, if you need like access to like the 12 is going to have like 5,000 more styles, just about everything you could possibly imagine in terms of label styles, profile views, section views, all kinds of more NCS. LDT-like point styles and in-depth support for NCS or typical utilities that you have, everything in the world from irrigation water, fuel oil, tons and tons of stuff all built in and easy to get to at an inexpensive price. Hey, if you want to kind of look like that, share that around with even your LDT or your LP users or even your LDT users. Uh, we have a blocks only NCS product. Basically, all the block libraries all cleaned up, made ready to run, and for an inexpensive price. So we're here to talk about medians, and they are a mystery. Uh, just a show of hands. Anybody, else, anybody tried to make medians work? Probably. Everybody's kind of tried once in a while and maybe failed. Yeah, I, I mean, I certainly did. So uh, there's some weird stuff in there. So we're kind of take an overview, look at some attack plans, look at some things you can do inside of Civil 3D about trying to make this stuff work because, I mean, if you work in a metro, you have medians all over the place. Where I am, there is not a street without one of the dumb suckers in there. And trying to make this stuff work in Civil 3D is not rocket science, but it's a little strange. Okay, a couple of key things. Alignments and profiles. This is stuff we've done for so long, it's sort of like a surface in Civil 3D. I know how to do everything about surfaces. I don't need to be told that how to do anything. I can do grading. I can grade anything. Well, alignments and profile pairs are the same kind of an issue in Civil 3D. You can use your old method of draw an AutoCAD P line and slam it into an alignment and make all that kind of stuff work. But then you're sort of short circuiting a whole bunch of things built into Civil 3D and make your life easier. And you don't know it. And they don't tell you. So while you can use create from objects to create almost any kind of horizontal and or vertical control in Civil 3D, it doesn't help you in the long run. So remember, hey, learn how to use those layout toolbars. A couple of little brief things, right, about uh, what those segment types are, right? So here's a slide. I'm not going to go over this in detail because we got lots of other stuff going on, but fixed, floating, and free, right? And in 12, we got a whole bunch of more stuff going on in terms of that to help you manage and control all that stuff better and this really helps a lot in terms of complex horizontal control and vertical control which we got to deal with so 
12 was a big bite at that horizontal control stuff, and that got a lot better. Okay, maybe in 13, we'll see more stuff in profiles to make that sort of stuff work better, because it does still need some work. It isn't perfect yet, but Civil 3D is never perfect. It's just getting more perfect every day, we hope. The other key issue here in terms of your alignment and profile pairs all that control stuff is remember you can data reference this stuff and with 12 one of the big goodies i consider it the number one goodie in 2012 is that now your offset alignments and your curve return alignments can also be data referenced so your horizontal and vertical control for your entire corridor can come from somewhere else and you can swap options around and play with that whole deal. Uh, so being able to employ data references effectively, keep that horizontal control out of your design drawing, so to speak, and be able to hop back and forth between the two and manipulate what's going on will definitely help you in terms of dealing with something nasty like a median where we got alignments crossing, center lines, and all kinds of other nasty stuff that can cause you some issues. Okay, so with that, Let's talk about it, right? Already made the comment here at the first part of the slide. You know, alignments from polyline suck. Don't do it. Remember that you can employ center line alignments, not offset alignments, um, completely different horizontal control uh, to deal with it. But I will point out at the end of my little thing inside of Civil 3D why that can cause you some issues, as we'll see. Right, so you kind of got to be aware that in terms of civil 3D speak, whenever you cross the center line, the primary baseline, right, you're running yourself into some control issues because it's kind of looking at the primary baseline, and so now you got to play the game of switching between different offset alignments as you run through regions in the corridor, and this is going to happen to you. It's going to take you a little while to get around this and, you know, uh, establishing a primary horizontal control for what your median is going to do uh, is a key step to this, right? And hopefully we can simplify a little bit of that. Remember that offset alignments, right, can be built two ways. Uh, when you create an offset alignment, I'm not going to probably do this in our uh, uh, work inside of Civil 3D, but it asks you, do you want to connect this to the primary or not? And that means, do you want it to look at the, if you move the primary around, is this offset alignment going to move around with it? And by the way, you can do station control or geometry control, and they do produce some subtleties in here, so you might want to play and exercise your brain a little bit in terms of that stuff. The other issue is widenings themselves. Definitely, if you're going to make you know, medians, you're going to have widenings, and then they have regions, and they have transitions, and we'll be definitely playing with that some more. They are far more powerful than they appear. I've done a couple other webinars. Uh, you might want to take a look at some of the things that you can do with widenings. Um, there is a lot of power in here, as long as you mind your P's and Q's in there, and they got better in 12. Okay, I consider, again, all this horizontal control stuff got much better in 12. Okay, so what is the difference between an offset alignment and a widening? Well, the offset alignment is tied to the center line geometry, and a widening allows you to divert from that and have regions in there or pieces if you will, uh, inside your offset that changes what's going on geometrically. And they definitely make the idea that's exactly what a median's doing. It's, you know, wandering around separately from what's going on with the center line baseline. And they have this idea of a region, and every single region in a widening has an entrance transition the distance that it does something different and then the transition back out of it or the exit transition. If it's at the front of an alignment, at the beginning of alignment, it's not going to have an entrance. It's only going to have an exit. Okay, so where you create that and Civil 3D widenings are very sensitive to that and you can have multiple widenings and widenings off widenings in an alignment. 
So, uh, you know, minding your P's and Q's inside the regions inside the widening, just like regions inside our corridor constructions, all right, are going to make your life a lot simpler, but pay attention to what's going on. And we have this idea in intersections, and we're going to start from an intersection because it's a classic way you got the problem. It usually happens at intersections, right, where we got to do something about what's going on with the median, doing something down the middle of the road. Anybody could do that. Okay, we got left turn lanes, right turn lanes, medians that come and go, disappear, turn throughs, all kinds of stuff going on, right, if you're dealing with street work. And so intersections are a classic way that you can deal with all those issues and they have this idea of a curb return alignment, which is very close kissing cousins to a widening and an offset alignment, in fact. So they're kind of a, a mixed little object with its own name inside an intersection. So let's hop over to Civil 3D just for a sec. I built a very simple little intersection. Um, hey, let's just take a quick peruse. We're going over an old building site. Okay, we're putting an intersection down so things are really flat. Got a teeny little vertical curve in the north-south alignment, south to north alignment, and just about a dead flat through. And you'll notice I've got, you know, a couple of PIs um, set up in my crossing profile. Okay, uh, as I go across the intersection where I put slope in the street, I actually did this by running the intersection one way, letting it modify my profile automatically with one kind of intersection, then I destroyed that intersection and left my vertical control modified to do that. Why did I do this? Well, this gives me kind of instant DIs. Okay, it gives me drop inlets, right, at, you know, where the intersection happens. So if you can visualize this a little bit, uh, this alignment comes up, goes up, and then goes down. And then, as you can see, I built a specific type of an intersection where I'm matching all the grade points, uh, but we're dropping down at all four corners here along this, these edge profiles. Okay, and that's so that, hey, my drainage is all going to run to these four corners, and it's a kind of nifty little trick that you can run one intersection one way, build the, you know, build the profiles, and then tweak things around and do different things with it. Okay, so it's a kind of a fast, quick, and dirty. Uh, you'll also notice a couple of other things about this intersection uh, and this quarter that I produced out of them. Uh, let's take a you know, some basic things, right? We'll take a look. There are a couple of, you know, basically we can take a look at edit offsets. And once again, um, if you ever watch me do intersections, I don't consider this go through the whole wizard at once, the way to do things. I've built things. Are we using existing alignments, et cetera, et cetera, right? All matter, curb returns, what's going on with those? We can go through each one of these three panels, right, and then recreate corridors. And I'm going to hit the recreate corridors. Okay. And I'm going to hit the recreate hit recreate quarters so 3d is going to run up and I'm actually running an assembly set right fairly standard this is right out of the jump um, and we're running 12 version here okay and I wanted to point out a couple of things because one of the issues that we got is hey I you know, how do I find out what's going on in an assembly set? And I kind of wanted to give you a little bit of a preview. Uh, this will go to the default location where Civil 3D looks. Um, if you didn't know it before, right, um, there are ways in here since we're in an open box, you know, uh, I'd like to see these as thumbnails, <laughs> right? Okay. Um, I can actually preview things. Uh, I can actually open XML files and do some other things in here, right? In terms of inside the open box in Windows, uh, which can lead you to these. So as you can see, I've got the previously released assembly sets and some new assembly sets that will be coming out in 12. Uh, we can also go to another location. We don't have to stay here, right? 
Okay, so uh, we go to assemblies, new assembly sets. I don't have any assembly sets in there. Since I'm looking for an XML file, we'll go up here. Okay, so I'm not going to go out and change this, but you know, there are things you can do out there. I've pointed them out before. Just wanted to say blah, blah, blah. Right? Um, you know, hey, let's do a target. Uh, often when you're working on this kind of place, um, you're not going to have a daylight target. Your daylight is just going to cause you issues um, to start out with. I often will use assembly sets to construct the intersections that have no daylighting in them for until I get down near the end, then I'll add them in, literally into the assemblies later by editing them. Um, because it just adds complication to your problem. And I want you to notice carefully the current condition of this corridor. I've already modified it, in fact. Okay, and you saw how things contract because of things that I built into that original corridor, the original intersection, it added regions. And if I click here, um, one of the great things in 12 is they definitely improved my ability to edit targets and all the tools to get at pieces inside my corridor got better and got easier to do. Um, one of the things the intersection wizard does, which is to our advantage, is it makes these little regions here where we have the full assembly applied. And so what we mean by that, so if um, uh, we'll go down and we'll just kind of pick on one of those guys and hit the section editor. And one of the nice things about in 12 is the section editor will remember where I was, my whole viewport configuration, show me what's going on a lot easier. And we're using, you know, basic view and edit section uh, stuff going on here. And as you can see, this is a pure full section, right? No median, nothing going on, right? Nothing under cover here. Okay, so I'm just going to close out of my section editor. I just want to give you a picture. That's what our classic cross section looks like, right? On my north to south baseline, you see where I am. I can switch baselines here, okay, what's going on in the quadrants, etc., and hop around, do whatever I want to do. Okay, let me close. Okay, so you got a basic. Um, a basic intersection that gives us something to start with and we're just going to work down we're going to work downstream we technically are probably going to have another intersection down here okay I may construct all this horizontal in one drawing move it over as I said data references right and I've got an alignment got some offsets going on here made some offset alignments um, so we go pay a little bit of attention here so I got a baseline center line alignment as you can see right here, I have an offset alignment, right, built, okay, for the left median. I actually got some lanes here, okay. Um, I was tempted to do multiple lane with median uh, type of example today, but I uh, decided against it, right, just to think, keep things simple. So got a couple of, got my median going around. If you take a look at it, let's look at it. We can click on here and you can see we've got, you know, here are my offset parameters. So I can actually play around with what my horizontal control is looking like. As you can see, I have one widening group. My nominal offset's only a couple of feet and then hop it out to six feet. And you'll notice this goes from the very beginning of the alignment. <laughs> okay, so it has no entrance and just has an exit. So it does, it starts six feet out, goes down, etc. Okay, and I can hop. One of the nice things here is I can hop right over to the other left median here, and we can take a look at what's going on there. And it's only a foot away from my center line, and it transitions in and out within the context, right, of the alignment. Okay, so not really scary right horizontal control going on yet fairly simple done that way on purpose as I pointed out earlier we want to keep things a little bit simple to start out with and now I need my region 
and I want my region to be bigger. So uh, Civil 3D is, you know, now a lot more point and shoot. So I can just drag and go all the way down and literally slam this to make my region go to the very end point of my main alignment and my corridor will stretch itself out uh, to do so. Okay, that was pretty easy. So I can take that region out. Um, I have another way to stretch the region. Okay, so um, let's actually do a, an undo and get rid of that. And oh, I did have a couple of things going on here. Notice um, if I before I leave, okay. And let's hop back into the section editor real quick. And you'll see, you know, he, I'm stretching around, okay. A um, couple other things going on, okay. So. A little bit of stretching going on, a little bit of slope, a teeny little bit of slope change going on, right? Okay. But basically, you know, things are dead flat at this point. Okay. Okay. No rocket science. Nothing difficult. Nothing really scary going on. Okay. Um, let's again, let's close out of the section editor. We'll hop back in and out of there a ton of times, right? Um, and now I would like to do a couple of things. I have targets applied, so I'm stretching my roadway out um, and following right my edge of traveled way in a classic fashion. So you know, if I grab my region, right, and we simply edited the targets for this region. Select my region, okay. All right, and you'll see I have, you know, we're doing lefts and rights with lanes, right? Okay, and we can hop in here, and you can see as I go through my intersection, uh, these were automatically done by, oh, it was so nice of it to create these for me, right? Okay, in the intersection wizard, which is one reason that I start with an intersection. Okay, so it does all this stuff out of the wizard. Um, because I said, hey, connect to this and connect to that. And you notice I got a lean left, right, that's marked as an edge of traveled way. And on the other side, I got one named and built beforehand, edge of traveled way. And those could come in probably, typically, I would have those be, you know, data reference alignments. Here, they don't happen to be in this example. And we're always looking, you know, to the outside. Okay, so we got this region. Um, I want to uh, uh, change something else about this region, right? And actually what I want to do is give it a different assembly. Okay, so uh, go to the parameters tab. Um, Civil 3D will remember where I was. Nifty stuff. It named that by my assembly name that I initially applied. And I'd like to assign a different assembly. Now, I've got a bunch of them tossed in here into this drawing, right? I'm looking for a specific named one, okay? I want the same size collector, so basically that knows, that lets me know, uh, okay, why is it a collector? Okay, that's an Ashto name. So it's a 35 mile an hour Astro compliant connector, right? Um, and it's got a median, and I want single slopes. So that's what the MS naming convention means. And this is the median version, right, that I'm going to apply. And when we apply this, you'll notice up here in the background, uh, my corridor rebuild. Okay, and my corridor will tell me right away, based on my style, that, hey, this differs from the whole rest of the corridor. So this you know, the style itself tells me, oh, I've applied a different set of assemblies, right, from the rest of my baseline here. Okay, so, ooh, 
Okay, so uh, one of the nice things about having a good style is it tells you right away, oh, okay, that's over, I've done that piece, I haven't done that piece, and, you know, that's a style control property uh, of the design side of what's going on with the style. And let's go look and see how Civil 3D does that kind of thing. So my parameter overrides are in red. Okay, so any section's got parameter overrides, and that means what's going on in that parameters box, okay, up here in the parameters tab is different. That's different from individual sections that I may have edited, okay, which are geometric overrides, which get a different color yet again. So I can tell the state of what's going on with my corridor right away. Okay, so a little bit of style lesson in there. Okay, so uh, we got our corridor, we applied that, right? And before we do anything, let's kind of take a look at what do we change? What's going on here? Okay, so things are mucky. Oh, well, wait, wait a minute. I'm not on that baseline here. So let's get down to our south and north and south. And we just hop up here a little bit, right? As you can see, things are not going to change at all. Huh. Okay. So we just statically applied, right? We swapped one assembly for another assembly, and it's got some blobby stuff going on here. And you will see I got a couple of curb returns smashed together, right? Because they're not targeted yet. Okay, so uh, let's bail out of the section editor and let's. Uh, let's see, how do we edit the targets? Oh, okay, so we right click, hit edit targets. And there's the one I want to edit. And we've got a whole slew more targets based on the details of the assembly that applied. And there's a bunch of them here. Okay, so now I've got the ability to control my sidewalk, the width of my sidewalk, my outside boulevards, all kinds of lane widths, and I got lane widths inside, right side, left sides. Okay, so first thing let's do, um, where do we want to hook up the outside lane? And remember, we're just doing one piece here uh, up to my intersection. And so, uh, where was I? Okay, I'm on the right side, so I'm looking for south to the north, right side, edge of traveled way, and that's what I want to do. Um, I did have, I, I've got a couple of issues where I got another, you know, I might have a curb return widening. In this case, I don't, so uh, what I mean by that is up at the other intersection, I may have a turn lane. Okay, so if I need that turn lane, I'd probably need to add that as the furthest outside. Uh, let's do the lane width on the inside here. Okay, and we want the left one, left over here. Okay, so got now I've got my widening going on. And since I already walked through that little bit of horizontal control, um, let's do the medians. So we can see what happens. So we're looking for a right median, right? Okay, there's the left one, so I don't want to do that. That would be wrong. So right median, okay, and say okay. And we're going to change the left median edge and connect it up south to north left and say okay. My quarter is going to rebuild because I changed parameters in that region and in 12 and actually a little bit of 11. Uh, this is region centric, so if I have a much bigger set of regions, I've just made that one change. And uh, let's take a look at inside the section editor once again. We're going to hop in and out of the section editor quite a bit. Okay, and. Forgot to pick something on the screen. It really does help to say I want to be here. Okay, as you can see, my median starts out in the actually in the middle of my street, which is where things are, and uh, it will actually move around. So you know, you know, let's go uphill 
and it will show me, whoops, probably got some transition. Let's go back a little bit. Google Station 100, I think it's actually a little bit earlier than that. So we'll like go Station 90, and I got some transition going on, and I'm going to just bang through a few stations, and you'll see my roadways moving around, my medians moving around, and and my median will go back and it shrinks back down because my horizontal control moves around. Oh, hey, it's doing all kinds of cool stuff. And you'll notice all these little red lines. You no, know, that's other horizontal control points, right? Uh, in my view style, my code set style that I'm actually employing inside the section editor, which is set by, oh, uh, which one am I using? So that's a property, you can set that a command setting, so I'm using actually a specific code set style, marking certain key points, getting labels that show me offset distances, et cetera, right, and doing that in a code set style, right? So, you know, I could see what my offsets are, what I'm going on elevation-wise, Right for all those key alignments, and you saw my median, and we could zoom in here. Okay, so we got a lipless median being applied in this subassembly. Uh, so it's a crown away. Okay, hence it's got a single crown going on, and we're actually going to get to constructing that in a little bit. I just want to kind of take you back through it, and uh, we want to make a couple of modifications here. Um, one, we don't want this guy starting, you know, where do we want this guy to actually start? Um, you know, we do we want to start out in the street? No, probably not. Um, just going to throw um, another little example here. Got a couple of other little center line alignments here. And you'll notice their data reference, right? And I currently have them off uh, with invisible styles. So we're just going to throw them on. And actually, I want them with layouts because I want the little node points. And I got a couple of centerline ones here. And got them turned off, right? So can't see them right now. Didn't want to clutter things up. And now you'll see I got um, a couple of other alignments here, a, a median east and a median west, so to speak. And they got a couple of nodes. So these are pure center line alignments. And um, let's take a look again at another important thing in my corridor. Right? One of the things about a corridor, if you grab it, okay, it's got surfaces. So right away, I built, when I built my intersection, I built my corridor, I built the top surface. It's got a top surface assigned here, and notice I'm employing the top links. Okay, you gotta remember to do the overhang correction. If you don't do it, particularly for datums, right, you will not get very good surfaces. I have a shrink wrap boundary being applied to my whole corridor. So I made myself a top surface, right? Uh, immediately inside the corridor, as soon as I made my intersection, and I'm doing it as a check, it has a style. Okay. And of course, the jump, you know, we're just using a half foot uh, by five foot. So uh, for corridors, particularly in flat sections, I want to see half foot contours, right? So I can see what's going on <laughs> if everything's dang near flat like this. Uh, this also has a couple other little style variations. So as we hop up into the object viewer, right? Um, let's, you know, take a look at our surface and done intentionally inside this style since we use it so often dealing with intersection stuff. I can see all my connection points um, even if I use a you know, different visual style here, right? So I can see my connection points, right, coming off. Okay, so this is one of the things turned on in the style so I can see the point locations where I'm effectively sampling and creating stuff inside my corridor. Okay, that gives me uh, uh, the ability to visualize, zoom in, and visualize what the heck is going on and where my key connection points are coming off my sub-assemblies, 
right? Kind of a nifty little style trick, sort of a QA style, right? So we're going to bail uh, other nifty jump stuff here, you know, just built in because it's got to be there is, you know, slope control. Okay, so, you know, we can pan and zoom. I'm going to pick off here, pan and zoom, so I can see what's going on. I'm, you know, my assembly is creating a surface. I'm getting nice blues and purples, right? Okay, which are built into my style and the range array I'm using if I want to, you know, make sure my analysis is, you know, tweaked the way I want it to, I could do what? Oh, go to the surface properties box. All right, go to my analysis tab, run my slope arrows. Hey, maybe I want fewer punch mount, and we'll get to a half foot's going to be red, half a percent. Right to two percent. That should be what my road stays in. Most of it. Some of it will be green. Right when I'm, and I'm up here in the purples and blues. Right. I know I'm dealing with curbs when I see it. So you say okay, run it. And of course, by tweaking the style a little bit, if I want, I can resize my arrows. But they give me pretty good visual, immediate visual feedback if I have something squirrely going on, uh, even inside my intersection. Here are things looking like they're flowing, right? You know, down to my DI, and as you can see, is you know, I'm a little bit steeper as I come around this corner, uh, dropping because of you know those little tweaks. Right, creating my little DIs out of my little trick that I did, right? Um, by making one intersection, throwing it away, and making another one that I started off with. Okay, so we got our median. Our median appears to be working, right? I'm going to uh, uh, change my style, and I'm using the Q mode box just because it's quick and dirty, right? Um, way to turn things on and off and change what things look like and all that stuff. And what I'd like to do is modify uh, this region a little bit. Okay, uh, I'm going to do this inside the quarter box. I can do this by drag, right? I really do like to make sure I'm grabbing the right place in here. And I really do not want my region to start out in the middle of the street. I want my region to start up here, pink, at that station point right there. Okay, so Soul3D allows you to uh, make modifications to where the regions start and end, which is really going to be important for our medians. Um, I also want to show you that I want to change the target here um, and shift them from the ones where, where we're using those offset alignments. That's one of the ones we're using right now. Here's the other one we're using right now. And I want to shift them over to these two center line alignments, right? And if we look at those center line alignments, you'll notice that up here at about station 200, plus a little bit here, those center line alignments actually cross over across uh, my center line alignment and uh, come back across. So I want to make a couple of things real clear in this exercise of dealing with my uh, median, which we now know works that way, uh, and the horizontal control, we're going to change it. So uh, we wanted to change those targets, so we use the edit target. I want to be in that region, and now I want to take my median right and I want to change this guy over to my east side median that's just a center line and I want to pull this guy out okay so we're only linked to that one and down here I want to change this guy to my west one and pull that guy out and say okay And since I changed my region, I'll get some, wait a minute, oops, right, um, get a few little warnings here, right, okay, and I'm going to do a couple of things, get out here, and I'm going to do a couple of things uh, to
to my corridor here since I'm using a design style right now right I got so much stuff going on uh, one of the things I like to do is you know go up to its properties right go to my info tab and please make the design style right be invisible and I'm just going to use another jump style and one of the other things in plan view I have a code set style also applied which allows me to do fancy things like screening and those sorts of things and right now I'm using one that actually does a few things right okay to the assemblies but I really want my assemblies to go off and I really want just this basic top hide right applied so my quarter is one big blob on my screen and I'm doing this very intentionally right uh, because it clearly shows me what's going on with my feature lines or my feature lines that are created by um, my uh, by my corridor uh, what's going on with the links and by connecting it by connecting my corridor I'm going to pick off here by connecting my corridor to this horizontal control points my edge of traveled way does some really interesting little weirdnesses as I cross over hey that center line Okay, so you know, here's one of the things you got to watch out for if you're using pure center lines. So this will probably happen to you, right? So you actually want to figure out, you know, where you're making that transition and make those separate alignments. Okay, not just use ones that travel away. At least with this subassembly that I'm employing, which is the classic uh, lane subassembly that I'm employing so it will do things right and it is doing that um, because I am crossing over right and it gets lost doing the linkages there's some other things you could do to correct things here uh, but your safest just to get your horizontal control if you cross over the center line right switch to another alignment and say use the inner one or the outer one so uh, you have more control and you can make a little teeny region right this will fix this problem if you want to use center line alignments so that makes that very obvious um, let's go back grab our quarter since now my quarter is this big blob I like to edit the targets here you know oops edit my targets in this region and we're going to switch them back okay so we wanted we're on the right side so we wanted the right median and add that and pull the left one off and we wanted the left median here and pull the west one off. Say OK. So hey, now you know all my feature lines all hook up again. My edge of traveled way doesn't cross the center line. Okay, and you know my lane to center. Right. What was that thing called? Right. Okay, so we can look at our corridor, look at the properties here, right, parameters, right, so we were looking at what was my assembly and, you know, is there any way we can pick, get to what assembly, so we're looking at 35 quarter MS median, that's the one I'm using. Okay, so would it be nice to zoom to that out of that box? So there's a request somebody else other than me could put in Autodesk, right? And um, we've got some assemblies. I wanted to point out a couple of things over here, right, um, that you may not know. So we got assembly collection, right? Oops, cancel. Right, got a bunch of styles, right? Oh, no, that's the prospector. Yes, arrangement. Okay, different place, assemblies, right? So we got a whole bunch since we've been we've been playing. I've been playing in here using rural versions with shoulders instead of sidewalks and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I got a whole bunch of assemblies, right? And 
when you're constructing and playing with this stuff, you may end up with a bunch of assemblies. I wanted to point out this little nifty little thing they added, like get rid of all the unreferenced ones and remove them all from my model space, right? Okay. So both of these can be extremely helpful in certain situations. Wanted to point those out. Um, and we've got a whole bunch of ones and any one of those I can zoom to that one so we can go right to wherever Soul 3D threw it in right and it ain't exactly that ain't exactly the one I wanted so um, where it throws it and where it finds it where it thinks it is might not be but you'll get pretty close All right so it's actually down here I think Okay, so here's our subassembly, and let's look carefully at its construction. Okay, uh, we can actually recreate another one here, and maybe that might be one of the things to do. But we've got uh, this subassembly. Okay, and we'll look at its properties. Uh, we could see its name there. It's called left from medium taper medium right. And just to connect all the pieces here in the tool palettes. If you're ever going to show my tool palette uh, menu, come on. Okay. Um, that is not in median, so we've got medians. we got a few selected medians here. Um, but we're really looking for a lane. That's what we're talking about here. I probably want to leave that so it stays out. Let's just stretch it out so you can see it, get it out of the property box. Okay, and uh, we got a whole bunch of tool pallets here, right? Um, okay, and lanes is up near the top. Okay, and, um, you know, they have changed subtly, right? Um, uh, in terms of the lanes, one of the biggies they added were the, you know, axis of rotation or the AOR super cell, super elevation ones. So uh, when the new jump ships, there'll be a whole bunch of assembly sets that employ those, right? Um, which are, are pretty nifty if you need to do rural roads and have that sort of thing, right? But what we we're looking for was that main to uh, you know, it's actually in here, right? I'm looking at it, but I'm not seeing it. Where is it? Lane to median. I know I pulled it out of here. <laughs> lane of the book back. Oh, lane to tapered median. There it is right there. Okay, so there's where it is. So yeah, I got the visual. And this has multiple crowns in it. Okay, so the difference between these two are this is a single crown road. This is a double crown. So if you got medians with two crowns, added complexity here, right? Um, you can get the help there. We're going to go out the help through the properties, right? Okay. So if you look at the parameters tab, right? Here's the help screen, right? Once again, every single subassembly. One of the issues about employing them is you gotta learn to read the speak here. Right, what it's going to do, where the codes are going to do, right, where the targets got to be, what are possible targets, right, uh, for your parameters, okay, right. So these take a little bit of weirdness, right, and they have a nice explanation of how these two median um, work. So one, the edge is at outside the attachment point right there's no median so this will kill the median okay so that means is there is no median at all there is no median target it will just operate as though it was a typical lane there is a median done that's inside from wherever that attachment point is right okay and so if we're using multiple lanes and so we got a lane on the inside and a lane over here right so we have a fairly simple one here we got an attachment point okay and it will foreshorten my lane okay and we've already seen it do that 
okay? And when the median goes away on the other side, the attachment point will also drift over there. And we saw the result of that with our center line using the center line examples. And then, you know, visually in plan, right, you know, it's doing exactly what we want, which is, you know, a right turn lane, left turn lane, right, or a left turn lane, right, and we're applying that. Okay, a couple of things, right, inside here that are subtle and we're, that are not obvious right away. Um, and I'm going to modify uh, one of them, right, uh, right away because we can make this visually apparent uh, what's going on. And I have an inside adjustment being applied of approximately eight inches here because I have an eight inch curb on the inside. And we're just going to make that two feet. Okay. Not 24 feet. <laughs> Two feet. Okay. Okay. And you will see it will hop away, right, um, from my center point. And one of the reasons I'm doing this, right, and we'll say okay. And we'll hop over to the other side and change that single parameter, right, uh, to be two feet again. On that side, and one of the things that the lane does, right, and you will need to know this when you construct it. So if I have an assembly and I want them linked to my middle of my base point, right, how am I going to get one of the key issues here uh, to my median, as we pointed out in the slide earlier, is that the median is attaching somewhere and then has to have a mark point on the other side. And everything gets kind of compressed into the middle of your subassembly. So how are you going to get the stuff attached? Because you got to attach this lane to you know the center point and then add in these guys um, so that it does what you want it to do. So I have to add in a modified curb here. And these are just curb assemblies. Okay. Nothing to just urban curb generals, right? Okay. Given a name, slapped in here. Okay. Made a couple of modifications to the width of the lip. Okay. Okay. Also carefully, you know, how, right? If there is a gutter slope, right? So if we wanted ones with lip, how that's going to respond? Okay. So uh, you know, currently this one, the way this sub this sub assembly is working, it's using outside lane slope, so it would match, right? What's going on in my curb? Okay. And if I did have a lip, that would allow me to deal with super elevations. Okay. Um, same on the other side. Uh, but also, all I've really done is remove the lip in terms of its dimension here. Okay? So it's got a hundredth of a lip. So it's got a teeny, teeny, teeny little lip. Right? Okay? Just to make it almost disappear and became, you know, just a block of concrete with a subgrade. I made very careful, you know, how deep my sub, sub base depth here is very carefully matched. Right, to uh, the bottom of my lane profile, by the way, right? So I don't have datum problems, okay? Another little kinky thing in getting these things put together. You got to make sure all your subgrades line up well, right, um, uh, to make things work. So we got a couple of those little kinky little details, right, that go on that have to do with the lane before we even get to the median. So to apply a curb, edit this guy, uh, one of the things you got to do is know that you got that inside offset, so actually what we're going to end up tying to, right, is to a back of curb, not my edge of traveled way. So uh, when we got the median, that's what we're doing, and so our 8-inch value was the thickness of the curb, so we're actually, my horizontal control here is tied to back of curb, not flow line, okay, because I either got the edge of my lip, okay, so I could tie it to the flow line, 
remember if I've got it, my lip is only 100 the way, I could actually tie to my flow line. I happen to choose to tie right to, you know, the back of curb. Okay, so you could basically get the edge of lane, right? If you still want to use that to travel way. In this example, using this subassembly, I'm tying to the back of curb by changing, right, in my lane subassembly. To be clear, right, I took my inside adjustment and made it, you know, 0 0.68. Okay, 667, right, with my tenth. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense, right? And I did that on the other side. Okay, um, I'm going to go back and change that back, move that back out to two feet just for one sec. Okay, and hit apply and say okay. And my median, I'm going to couple of little things uh, I'm going to go back and point out in a slide here uh, a couple of little things uh, when you construct your sub-assembly sub one of the things you'll find occasionally is that civil 3d will only make you one group okay and so one of the things that's easier is to start with a simple sub-assembly you know work for your road or a simple assembly that has lefts and rights uh, with lots of the pieces you want and then start swapping the pieces around So very often it's easier and faster in civil 3d to actually instead of create a new assembly Actually take one and make a you know effectively edit a copy into what you want so uh, You want to make sure to all the medians and depending upon how you in initially attach things, Civil 3D will occasionally throw everything into a single group, which will cause you problems. So I'm, you know, uh, been warning you. All right. So one of the things you want to, you know, start with a simple subassembly, even one of the copies, you know, one of the stock, really basic, simple Civil 3D examples, and modify it. It's often faster. So you'll notice a couple of things about these groups is that um, my median is in my left group and there's a mark point, okay, a mark point object in the other one and it has a name, okay, and I'm not sure you know that here's how you could change that name and then over in the median, right, it's looking for a mark point and those names, the input, right must agree okay so exact spelling here must agree with exact spelling there so one of the things about mark points is they're effectively talking between groups right and now you can ask the question do they talk between assemblies you betcha okay so uh, it's going to do it by a named name Okay, so uh, let's hop back over into PowerPoint for a couple of seconds, right? So all the median assemblies rely on this idea of a mark point. So it's going to do something, and it's going to want to be in one group, and it's going to look for a marked name point in another location. And so that name location is what's going to hook the other side to. And this is pretty much true for all the medians, almost all the medians. I'm going to say almost all because there are a couple that are a little different, right? Uh, so typical, you know, we've seen the typical lanes, right? And they're in the lanes palette, have nothing to do with the medians themselves, okay? Um, and uh, if you got a single baseline road, okay, not two, two lanes that drift in, do all that kind of stuff like super highway right which is mostly what we're going to be doing here right there are you know uh, a double lane with a crown okay which will produce we're using the m1 in our example but there is a double crown one and you have to be very careful about setting the sub uh, the super elevation parameters in those to make sure your crowns work okay um, and if you're Median is going to appear and disappear, which was often common, and you're going to have changes. You may have to actually add 
regions to do slightly different things, as I pointed out with our crossing example. Um, and a couple of basic help, right, as we're near the end of our lesson that I want to be clear. One of the things you need to think about all your assemblies is think of them as a block. You got to construct this thing somewhere, and then you got to store it, and you got to get it into other drawings. So uh, there are a couple of tools, like you know, in this assembly set that will let you add them to an assembly set or make assembly sets. These may lead you to damnation, right? So one of the things you can do is make your assembly. Think of it as something you create somewhere that you store somewhere else and use it in different drawings, just like you would a block. And you might test and find out if I can W block out to a new drawing, right, out of my drawing. Can I grab this stuff from this assembly? And another couple of little tricks here. Uh, grab your assembly, okay, and before you do that, you know, make sure that, you know, it's object style and code set are both standard. Okay. <laughs> right. So you want to do this. Okay. Make it ugly. Okay. And test and see if you can W block this out to a name drawing. And then if you need a new assembly, and we'll just go out and get one, uh, you don't need to have it in the tool palette. Okay. Uh, Here's a quick one, right? So if I wanted my, I've got a rural one with full sections. See if I got a rural medium one that I made in here yet. Right? So I got all these assemblies, right, in a giant collection, right? So, you know, here's a rural median, right? Okay. And I can grab this guy, right? Um, how I might want to start is my full section, okay? So here's one with, you know, axis of rotation, right? Done for rural roadways where I, I got a link to the right or left side for the supers, right? So that's what axis of rotation does, right? Okay, or an on-ramp, <laughs> okay? Um, and I may want to start with this one, modify it by replacing and edit assemblies. And what we're focused on right here is I need this in my current drawing. How do I do that? I just used insert, okay? And what do I want to do? I want to specify its location, and I want to ex make sure this explode box is on. I want to do uniform scale and dink. And it will come in, and because I got it out, it'll come back in, and now I have, you know, I can change my assembly and edit my assembly and edit parts and pieces. And if you really want to be real sneaky, you know, and since now I got it in my drawing and I'd like to see it and have it, you know, not be quite so ugly, you know, go to my assembly properties, you know, do my one no plot labels classic jump style so I can see what my slopes look like, okay, and, you know, hey, maybe I want it to look like a basic road, all that effects is, you know, what my center looks like, my little markers look like, okay, and now I can modify these. This lane, all right, um, it is, right, uh, one with AOR, right, and I'm not going to go into the details of AOR here, but maybe I wanted to use this median right. Okay, so this guy, I'm looking at, okay, there's the tapered median. So I wanted to change this subassembly and do that, right? So, um, you know, I can get rid of my AOR here, get rid of my AOR here, okay? And then, you know, my... Subassembly is all broken. Well, you know, I want to grab this guy up here, right? And I want to copy that guy, and I want to copy it to that connection point right there. Okay. And and now I want this guy over here, and I want to copy this to this one down here. Remember, I got my offsets all done, and. 
I'd like to uh, get my curbs, right? I need my curbs. Okay, and copy to this assembly right here. It's actually connecting on the lip in. Okay, and I need to grab this guy and copy to assembly down here. Okay, and now I need my median. Okay, and I need to copy to assembly down here. And I need, oh, this thing is really ugly. So, hey, I need to, you know, grab this guy and make this so I can see my mark point, which right now is all down to standard. So it's just a circle and I don't know which one is my mark point, right? So that's buried in what? That's buried in, oh, the code set style, right? Okay, so I got no plot labels, which has my mark points. And, you know, we go up and look for points and there is a point, point edge of traveled way, mark point. Okay, so it actually uses a mark point style, right? Okay, just uh, hopefully that will connect all that stuff for you mentally and visually. All right, and what do we need to do? Okay, we need to grab that mark point guy. And no, oh, we didn't want that. We wanted the mark point. Okay, that's a little square box. Make sure I got that guy. Uh, copy assembly. And I want to actually make sure I hook it to that top edge curb. I think right there. Okay. And we, of course, got some name cleanup to do, okay? And we can check out our construction. So let's see. Let's take a look at my assembly it's construction. Okay, so notice that my subbases, which were in one group, right, that made into new groups, Okay, okay, so these guys need to be moved, right, and reattached to my tapered median left and my tapered median right. Okay, so you can check in the construction box, are things corrected, connected right? Okay, um, and if you've got a median where you've got a divided road, the other key issue for your assembly and Civil 3D will heal at you if you're using, you know, one of the medians that deal with divided roads and the supers that want divided roads. Uh, this is new in 12. You need to tell the assembly type and this construction cab, whether it's a divided crown or divided planer or et cetera. Otherwise, it's going to squeal and warn you, which is good news, okay, um, when you apply super elevation to it. So uh, pay attention. That's where it is, a construction tab. Okay, so we got these two little pieces that got to get moved into the right groups. Okay, so uh, this guy, right, I need to move, right, to that assembly. And uh, notice at one point or another, it will go, hey, I'm really not connected to anything anymore. And I need to move to that assembly point. Okay, so I just reconstructed other than naming issues, which I'm going to point out that the properties of your subassembly in terms of names here, right? Okay, um, why, one reason you want to kind of do this in a drawing, W block it out, go out there and then do the name cleanup is get rid of all these ones so you don't have one, copy, copy, copies, right? Okay, make sure, right? Uh, you know, your slope methods all line up here in terms of properties, right? But I just manufactured in less than six minutes, right, a brand new subassembly to do for my medians, right, uh, without the sidewalks. And, hey, let's test it. We've got a running corridor. Right, and how would I do that? Okay, grab my corridor, take my corridor properties, and since I grabbed in that region, it'll highlight it for me. And now the one I wanted was that one, what did I call that? Oh, see now, 
dang. Oh, well, I, I, can, I, I can actually go pick it, you know. Whatever the heck it was called and probably should have changed its name <laughs> since that's not the right name, right? Okay, and if you don't do that name cleanup, right? Okay, and my quarter is going to uh, do its deal, right? Okay, and there's my quarter. Let's grab my surface, right? Slam up into the object viewer, right? And you know, just make this simple. Oh, hey, well, okay, let's use a different style here. Instead of half foot contours, let's uh, use another one with just ones, right? Okay, and grab that surface again. Okay, and I can actually see from my feature lines, right? Uh, that all my mark point stuff is actually working, right? And I just changed from sidewalks to shoulders, right, in a matter of seconds, right? Um, we wanted to go up the object viewer and take a look at that guy. And, you know, this is good discipline. Make sure that things visually give you back the feedback that you expect. Does my median work? Does it look like it works the way it should? Is it producing a good surface, right? Okay. Um, I thought I'd do for a wrap up. Um, let's apply some super elevation and, you know, we'll do something radical here. Okay. And we're going to do it. Uh, please calculate it now. Okay. And we got an undivided crown road. Okay. Um, we got a uh, uh, 24 foot lane. You know, we got 12 foot lanes, but we got two of them. Okay, that's basically how we want to do this. It is a symmetric roadway, right? Okay, we're not going to worry about inside medians, right? Okay, so if I had divided road, now that's where this makes sense here, right? We now have shoulders, right? Um, you know, we'll just give them five foot shoulders, right? Okay, deal with the rollovers, okay? Okay, um, resolve overlaps just to make my life simpler. And did I pick the right, you know, Astro table? He uh, need to make sure all got that. Okay, and you know, grab my quarter section editor. And uh, note even before I go in there, can I rebuild? Of course. Right, if you knew 12 stuff, right? Bam. Okay, and now I got my supers. Okay, so my supers being applied, things are not happening with my shoulders because I actually didn't need to change anything, right? Okay. All right, so now I've got a super driven road. Okay, with a median, right? And notice my uh, surface most definitely changed, right? And find a little wrap up here, right? Uh, we'll zoom around, do it from the southwest, you know, pan zoom. Rotate up. Oh, even better. Let's actually go top, go this way, look down the street, come this way, zoom in, and hey, go to perspective view, and right click, and adjust my distance. You know, hey, pretty little road with median, being applied with supers, uh, done side an hour and 10 minutes. Okay, so we're gonna hop back to our slideshow. So uh, give you a couple of tricks on median assemblies. 
couple of little slides here. You want to test the assembly with simple offsets, make sure you get surfaces, and then build up the detail right as you go along. If you try to do all at once, all up front, you will make mistakes. The reason you test your sub-assembly with those simple offsets as I did and even made changes to and showed you, hey, it's easier to edit than it is to create, right, um, and test and view and edit sections. Are you getting results? Are, are the shoulders responding properly? Is the sidewalk doing what I thought it would do? Okay, make sure all that stuff that it works and then build up inside the real geometry the complexity in the steps. Also recognize that data references, if you want to modify your horizontal control and test it against, go out and make that new horizontal control somewhere else, reference it in, test it, okay, pull it back out. Don't be stuck in the idea of, I got to get everything done in this drawing. Your drawing may blow up, <laughs> okay? Your corridor may get too complicated and you may run out of memory and all those kinds of things so keep your options outside and safe and employ data references right uh, to do that uh, you need to make sure that this edge of traveled way issues inside all those little um, right each one of those sub assemblies is all hooked up properly and you know it's logical there's nothing rocket science about it but you do have to be meticulous about all the detail and I often get the question, I've gotten the question a few times, hey, if we applied super and we did that, you know, other one, oh, I need lips on the inside lane. Let's make this visually clear. So uh, would I need lip on, you know, curb and gutter right in here? I'm certainly, you know, super elevating. I might need lip now all applied in here. And the answer to the question is, how you do that is add a conditional sub-assembly right, to simply employ a different curb if a condition applies. And those can be found over in the tool palette inside Civil 3D.